doing, everyone? Uh, my name is Ben Zink. This is George Zink. Uh, we've had a lot on our brains lately uh, about sharing with the world what we know about tennis. So today we're going to start our, our video blog. Uh, we hope you're excited. We're super excited. Uh, and today I'm inter interviewing George Zink, uh, my mentor for the past 30 years, a phenomenal tennis coach and uncle. Um, but he's going to share some information with us about how he looks for tennis coaches for his kids and what he f values in them. Um, so he's also a nine-time national tennis champion. Uh, he's been number one in the country in the 35s. He's got two kids uh, that are both highly ranked in the nation. And he's got tons of insight to share with us, and we're glad to interview him. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Uh, so, George, tell us, you're, you're a father and, and a coach, um, and so you have, you have both sides of the coin. Share with us a little bit about how that influences your decisions on finding coaches and, and what you look for. That's great. So, thanks, Ben. Um, so I think one of the biggest things that I look for is, number one, uh, the quality of the person. I think that is, uh, for me, it's everything. Um, because I think that the whoever is going to coach my kids uh, are going to spend a lot of time with them. Um, and you know, it's two hour practice in the morning, two hour practice in the afternoon. And when you're spending that much time with someone, it's, it's a lot. And I think, you know, four hours of the day you know, all of a sudden you don't think it's a lot at the beginning, but after week after week after week, it's a lot. And I think the person has to be a quality person. Uh, people ask me, all, what does that mean? And, you know, I, I think the, the answer to that is, you know, are, do they have a great work ethic? Do they have a great system? You know, do they, do they, are, do they have a great communication skills with my kids? Uh, I can tell within the first um, 10 minutes when I'm with someone, whether or not they have a good rapport with my kids. Uh, and, and to me, uh, that's everything. And the, uh, the other big thing is, is that I let my kids decide. Um, one of the things that we do is when we try a coach, uh, we let them come in, uh, I, they get into the car, I let them you know, get something to eat and get something to drink. And then after that, we literally say, hey, guys, how did you like it? You know, tell me the good, tell me the bad, tell me the ugly. And they really are honest with me. I can tell you a quick story that, you know, uh, Tyler had gone to someone and, and uh, you know, I thought the coach was an amazing coach, amazing coach. And I was so excited. I felt like we hit a home run. And Tyler got in the car and he said, Dad, I never want to go back there. So, you know what I did? This was before I was a little more knowledgeable than I am now. I, I said, Tyler, look, you got to trust me with this. You need to go back. The next time we went back, he, he you know, said it again. Dad, and he actually got tears in his eyes. This is when Tyler was like nine, nine years old. And it really opened my eyes that it's so important that it's not about us as parents or coaches, it's about the kid. And so if the kid doesn't have a great rapport, uh, you know, it's a tough one. So number one thing, find that great connection that works and then you know, build on that. That's, that's great. Um, along the lines of that, you said a great connection, and does that have something to do with how to make the kids feel, or is that something that you're looking for uh, to decide whether or not that that's the right person? Yeah, that's a great question. So I, I think that one of the things that, you know, uh, my philosophy anyway, uh, since I've been a coach for a long time too, is that internal belief, right? I think that when you show up um, at a, at, and I, uh, my kids will say this, is that when you show up after um, you know, 30 minutes. You can tell whether that coach is invested. Um, you can tell whether that coach is doing it out of passion and believes. And 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 you, then you can tell by body language and 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 the way my kids look at that that coach. Um, that man, there it is. That's the connection that I'm looking for. That's what. And, and it's just a rapport that goes back and forth. And. I think it's priceless and honestly if I could tell everybody right now if I had a list of people my phone would ring off the hook uh, because we have struggled with it for sure uh, but I think if you interview enough people uh, that you'll find it but one of the things that I want to stress is that you know just don't pick the first person that comes down the road you know do some homework because connection is, is everything that's that's exact that's exactly right and what kind of what kind of homework would you recommend someone does uh, to find that coach, you, you you spoke about that just a second ago. What yeah. what does that look like uh, for someone that might be, you know, entering the higher level of tennis yeah. right now? So that's uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, so here's 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 what I do, um, and this is you know let you know a little bit about my, the way I go about it, and then you can take from that what it is. So 
The first thing that I do is I do my homework on Google. All right, you can Google anyone. Uh, you know, I want to make sure that the person obviously didn't get in any trouble. I want to make sure that the person is a good standing human being. Uh, then I want to look at I want to look at some of the things that they've done as a player. Like I, I, that's important to me because I think it's tough to teach uh, my kids how to compete at five all in the third when when you're nervous and you're shaky and things are going on when somebody else hasn't been it. I don't necessarily feel that they have to be in the you know in, in the semis or you know in, of Wimbledon number one in the world, but I definitely feel that that playing experience is gigantic. Uh, you know, so that's something that I do. Then, you know, the biggest thing I do is I, I ask the person to go to lunch with me. Uh, before I even have the, them go to, on the court, I ask the person to go to lunch with me. And I sit down and I ask pertinent questions. I ask questions like, you know, tell me about your family life. Tell me about the people that you've coached in the past. Tell me about your longest standing student. You know, who, is, who have you coached from the beginning to the end? You know, we call that start to finish. You know, who have you coached? You know, there's a lot of coaches out there that take a 16-year-old kid that's already, you know, dynamic and good, and they might be able to get them to the next level, and there's, those coaches are fine. But if you have a younger kid that's looking to progress and, and get it better, you, you've got to look for somebody that's a developmental coach. So, you know, and through that lunch, uh, you know, that might be a 45-minute or an hour lunch. Through that lunch, I find that... I get a lot of those answers and, and, and then you know what, when I get in my car after that, I can tell, you know, is this somebody that I want to spend, let's call it, you know, four hours a day, five days a week, let's call it 20 mm -hmm. to 25 hours a week that they're going to be around, which is a huge influence on my kids, you know, do I want this person to be around my kids? And mm -hmm. bottom line, if you know, and that those checklists, you know, that checklist isn't always easy to check off. You know, all those checks, check marks. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, we're gonna keep going along the lines of that, but like the intangibles, like things that don't necessarily pertain to strokes, but strategies and mental toughness and things on and off the court. How important is that to to the growth of a player and, and looking for a coach that kind of understands those things? Mm -hmm. So I think that, um, be, again, before I was a coach and I was working dollars for hours uh, and I was coaching on the court and I would get paid when I was on the court, I had so many of my students would say, you know, can you, can you go to a tournament this weekend? Um, and those coaches out there that do that, please, this is no bust on you guys because I know everybody has to make a living. But what was huge for me is I used to travel to the tournaments with my kids and, and I didn't get paid that much, uh, but I, I felt like I, did, I needed to do it to see those things. So I think that when you see a child, uh, like I travel with my kids to every tournament now because I'm their dad and, and, and they can pay me, they, can, they don't have to pay me to be there. Right. So I'm there and I, and, and I think that's where you see the intangibles. You right. see, you know, what does, what, you know, how did he handle the pressure at that four all? You know, when he got pulled out wide, you know, at, at, at three all deuce, you know, was he able to roll a backhand cross court or did he get stiff? You know, what was his athletic, what was his athleticism? Could he slide on clay? Um, what was his, what, did he take his time during points? Like all those little things, I don't think that you can find those things just on the practice court. So the, the coaches that say, oh, don't worry, you know, show up on my court, you know, Monday through Friday and, you know, tournaments on weekends, I don't have to be there, I think is crazy. Mm -hmm. So either A, the parent has to step up and pay the coach money to go out and, and watch, or the least case scenario, put a film up on the court so they can see those little nuances. Because I don't think if you, if you don't watch those things, there's no chance that you can, that you can know what the kid's doing. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for watching. We've enjoyed having you today on our first video blog. Look for us again next week as we share some more information with you. Thank you.